Let's bring in retired four star General Jack Keen, former Army Vice Chief of Staff, now Chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, and Fox News' senior strategic analyst. General, good to have you with us. Uh, we have not heard from you yet so far on this breaking news. Tell us your reaction, sir. Well, certainly, uh, Iran launching 200 missiles against Israel is a significant event in itself. But also providing early warning that that event is taking place is, is also pretty significant. What, what's going on with the Iranians here? I believe the Iranians have been back on their heels for some time now. Uh, ever, ever since uh, Hanaya was killed in a high security zone where many of their senior leaders live. Uh, and they promised retaliation, and eight weeks later, I think we're almost in the ninth week, there's finally some, some retaliation. My Israeli sources, relatively high, uh, told me that uh, Hamas, very frustrated with Iran over this, Hezbollah, very frustrated that they didn't get more support out of Iran. Uh, and I think the Iranians are calculating. They want their proxies to do the work for them. That was the concept from the beginning. But I believe that given the tenuous situation that they have domestically in the country, my sources also tell me it's a much more fragile situation than many people realize. So what's the early warning all about? I think that's what it's all about, is, is letting Israel know the attack is coming, about when it's coming, to minimize the casualties so there is not a, a very effective response back on Iran that would put pressure on that domestic population. And I think that's exactly what we should do, frankly. And I, and I think the United States should uh, make up its mind to take the Houthis off the board. They have shut down the Suez Canal for months. They fired on U.S. Navy warships with anti-ship ballistic missiles and were still playing defense with these guys. It makes no sense whatsoever. I'm assuming the United States had a role to play tonight. In, in helping Israel, and that's certainly very worthy, and we've got enormous capability. And I think the Isra Israelis will probably attack sooner rather than later. So, General, I, I want to go back to what you just laid out there, because you're suggesting, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Iran is in, in such a complex position right now, the leadership in Iran, and we've seen the, the hierarchy chart of which everyone is knocked out, although there's a lot of deputies underneath those people, but that they essentially needed for their own power in their own country to show this display of an enormous missile strike on Israel in order to, con in order to sort of let their own people know, look, we're responding to these hits against Nasrallah and Hania. Is that correct? And if that's the case, um, what does Israel, what do you think Israel does do next? Well, I think they'll calculate that they, they responded very lightly the last time, just mm -hmm. taking down an air defense facility right outside uh, Natanz, which is a nuclear enterprise. They did that internally from the country. Mm -hmm. And I think they wanted to sh show a little bit of leg there that they could do something like that and, and not have to penetrate Israeli airspace. But at the same time, you know, it, they weren't doing any real damage. This time, I think they're going to take some action. It likely will be more forcible, more comprehensive. But also, you have to keep in mind, the main effort that Israeli, Israel is conducting right now is where? It's in Lebanon. They've got a ground incursion going on, and they've got a systematic campaign to take down as many leaders as they can, and as much of the rocket launchers and missiles and other infrastructure that they have there. So that is their main effort. But I do think that they'll seize the opportunity that the Iranians have presented to them. And even though there's no casualties here, I mean, this is a major event. Yeah. 200 ballistic missiles is significant. And I don't see how the Israelis uh, can ignore that and just go b punch back lightly uh, like they did, did the last time. And I think they're very sensitive to the fact that, that Iran's leadership is in a much more fragile position with their domestic population. And I think they may be more sensitive to that than the United States is. We share intelligence, so I'm assuming both of us are aware of it. But I, the Israelis are more sensitive to it in terms of wanting to do something about it. Mm -hmm. 
The United States, I don't think, wants to do anything about it, to be frank about it. Yeah, and I want to get to that with you. But it's interesting. Um, I, I was listening to General Kellogg before, and he was talking about Netanyahu and what he has accomplished, which has been extraordinary. You think about this pager attack. You think about the uh, decapitation of so many of these leaders across the board. And I, I'm thinking also about Netanyahu at the UN, and he showed one chart called the blessing and one chart called the curse. And the blessing is a future in the Middle East that has the United, uh, the Arab states and Israel and Saudi Arabia pushing towards a more um, advanced, economic, strong future for the region. And the curse was Iranian leadership. So if Iran is back on its heels, as you say, is this not the moment to take advantage of this and to push them further back and perhaps give the Iranian people a chance at brand new leadership in their country, General? Yeah, well, you put your finger right on it. I don't want to be Pollyannish about it and say, you know, there's going to be an overthrow of the regime. You know, next week or so, but it, it, it takes time, and I think we, it is time to push back here, and and, and certainly develop that situation. And what is, what the is, Israelis have done in Lebanon is absolutely stunning and unprecedented in, in my frame in my frame of reference. And I think it's something they've been planning, obviously, for a very long time. And, and uh, Netanyahu made a commitment to up his game here. He knew full well the United States wasn't with him. Yes. What the United States wants to do is stop. They want to yes. stop all the shooting in President Gaza, said that. In, in Lebanon. Just stop it. Stop yep. it with the Houthis. Just and, and, and take the status quo. And the status quo was totally unsatisfactory to the Israelis. Yeah, indeed. We heard President Biden say stop and ceasefire. General Keene, thank you very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.